What do you do if you overshoot your landing field? Hi, I'm Greg, and you're getting safer every day. Remember in the last episode, we talked about safety margins and risk. Today, we're talking about landing safely. And you'll learn how to choose a good landing spot, what to do on sloping fields, and how to avoid becoming a lumberjack. If you're new here, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you want to support the channel and take your learning to the next level, visit flywithgreg.com. You know when you line up a really good landing field and then you hit lift and lift and lift and you try and get rid of it by essing off your height and you just go over the whole landing field and end up looking for something soft to hit. <laughs> We've all been there. I've ended up in the tennis court fence in the early days. Sometimes it can be scary. It's super dangerous and it takes a solid bite out of that pizza of pandemonium. Why does this happen? Here's a pilot looking for a landing spot during a Volberg in the Alps. Nobody gets hurt here. Let's watch what happens and then we'll talk about it. So what can you do? Let's run through that again and I'll talk you through it. So this is a good height to start looking at your landing options and trying to line them up. You want to work out what the wind is doing down in the bottom and usually in the afternoon the valley wind is running from right to left up the river. So you can assume he's pointing into wind now, he's done that very well and he's got a beautiful landing field right out there. It's lined up with the wind, it's got very few hazards around it, and most importantly, it's an uphill for the pilot. So this is the landing field that you really don't want to be overshooting. Everything past the end of this field is sloping downwards towards the valley, and the wind will be running up that slope and generating lift. So it'll be very, very difficult to land on the downward sloping fields. So he starts his proper setup turn here, but then never finishes it. And this is the classic S turn error that pilots make. That just means you use up your whole landing field. Let's go back and have a look at the right approach. What you want to do is avoid doing an S turn and to do a loop. Place your loops on the outside edges of your landing field. And that way you can keep that landing field in striking range all the time and never progress beyond it. You're crossing over your track. Don't let the S and the idea of an aircraft push you forwards and down the valley. So the same thing's happening here. And he's got a second chance here to loop out to the left and come back into the field under his feet. But this S turn and momentum of the glider driving down the va valley is keeping him uh, avoiding obstacles left and right, left and right. And this will drive you 
further and further down towards the hazards at the end of your box. So you've got to break that mindset and swing out away from that field and come back in on the right line. Even if it's slightly upslope, that'll help you. All right, he's spotted the hazards well, and I like the way he's got his legs down early so he can land safely at any point. But he's got too much height still. And the only way to get rid of that would be to swing out, way out to the left, and come back in up that slope. At this point here, with that little surge and the slow speed, I think is a good opportunity to do a butterfly landing approach from this position. And just to get rid of the altitude, keeping the glider straight, there's a lot of space there, and it should be easy to bring the glider down safely. Hitting lift is an opportunity to use the lift to veer away and come back in on a better approach. So don't let it dictate your landing approach. So at this point, he's now very low and he's opting to run for the river. Uh, this is very risky height to do this. The trees are so close and you can expect to get turbulence just at about this level as you go into sort of the ground wash. So the scamble paid off, but it's a bit risky. The riverbed is a good area to land. Just be careful of running water. But there's space here. Now at this point he's gliding clear of the bridge, but I think the target fixation and the worry of the bridge means now he's pumping the brakes a bit and he almost impacts the bridge. So remember to make your turns loops and not S's and aim for about the first third of your landing field. What you need to practice is spot landings, crosswind landings, and the butterfly approach. So now you've learned how to avoid the number one mistake of paraglider landings. If you know someone who will benefit from this video, share it. To really master your landings, check out the special landing lesson coming soon on flywithgreg.com. What's your favorite landing tip? Let me know in the comments. If you have any educational footage you'd like to share, email greg at flywithgreg.com. I'll see you next time when we discuss hard landings. Fly safe.